All right, so we seem to be having some light issues, but that's okay. Um, all right, so let's pick up where we left off. First of all, we're still on the hydrogen atom uh, from Monday. And on Monday, what we were discussing was the solution to the Schrodinger equation for the wave function. And we also, when we solved or we looked at the solution to that Schrodinger equation, what we saw was that we actually needed three different quantum numbers to fully describe the wave function of a hydrogen atom or to fully describe an orbital. We didn't just need that n, not just the principal quantum number that we needed to discuss the energy, but we also need to talk about l and m, as we did in our clicker question up here. We also talked about, well, what is it when we say wave function? What does that actually mean? And first, we discussed the fact that, well, in terms of a classical analogy, we don't really have one for wave function. We can't really think of a way to picture wave function thinking in classical terms. But we do have an interpretation for wave function squared. And when we take the wave function and square it, that's going to be equal to the probability density of finding an electron at some point in your atom. And that's useful in terms of seeing a general shape. But if we're actually interested in thinking about how far away that electron is from the nucleus, you can see that instead of talking about probability density, which is a probability per volume, instead it would be much more useful to talk about something called radial probability distribution, or in other words, talking about the probability of finding the electron at some distance, which we define as r, from the nucleus in a spherical shell that is just infinitesimally small, infinitesimally thin, at a distance or at a thickness that we'll call a dr here. So basically what we're saying is if we take any shell that's at some distance away from the nucleus, we can think about what the probability is of finding an electron at that radius. And that's the definition we gave to the radio probability distribution. And we can look at the formula that got us here. This is the radio probability distribution formula for an s orbital which is, of course, dealing with something that's spherically symmetrical. It's somewhat different when we're talking about the p or the d orbitals, and we won't go into the equation there, but this will give you an idea of what we're really talking about with this radial probability distribution. So what we can do to actually get a probability instead of a probability density that we're talking about is to take the wave function squared, which we know is probability density, and multiply it by the volume of that very, very thin spherical shell that we're talking about at distance r. So if we want to talk about the volume of that, we just talk about the surface area, which is 4 pi r squared, and we multiply that by the thickness dr. So if we take this term, which is a volume term, and multiply it by probability over volume, what we're going to end up with is an actual probability of finding our electron at that distance r from the nucleus. So the example that we took on Monday and that we ended with when we ended class was looking at the 1s orbital for a hydrogen atom. And what we could do is we could graph the radio probability as a function of radius here. And when we do that, we can see this curve, this probability curve, where we have a maximum probability of finding the electron this far away from the nucleus. And we call that most probable radius r sub mp, or most probable radius. And what we discussed is that for a 1s hydrogen atom, that falls at an a naught distance away from the nucleus. And remember, a naught, that's just the Bohr uh, radius. It's a constant. That's all we need to worry about. We talked about the Bohr model and how that told us an exact distance. It was a classical model, right? So we could say the electron is exactly this far away from the nucleus. We cannot do that with quantum mechanics. The more true picture is the best we can get to is talk about what the probability is of finding that the, the electron at any given nucleus. And the most probable one here is at A naught. The other thing that we looked at, which I want to stress again, and I'll stress it as many times as I can fit it into lecture, because uh, this is something that confuses students when they're trying to identify, for example, different nodes or areas of no probability in an orbital, is remember that this area right here at r equals 0, that is not a node. We will always have r equals 0 in these radio probability distribution graphs. And we can think about why that is. At first, it might be counterintuitive, because we know the probability density at the nucleus is the greatest. 
so the probability of having an electron at the nucleus in terms of probability per volume is very, very high. But remember that we need to multiply it by the volume here, the volume of some sphere we've defined. And when we define that as r being equal to 0, essentially we're multiplying the probability density by 0. So that's why we have this 0 point here. And just to point out again and again and again, it's not a radial node. It's just a point where we're starting our graph because we're multiplying it by r equals 0.